Because they like to put great on everything. It's always the Great Depression. The, the great, great Stabilization. The Great <laughs> Stabilization. What's going on, guys? It's Brendan King from the Brendan King Group at Real. Jack Palermo. Denise Tipton. And Caroline Lazon. And we're here for the market roundtable. So there's definitely a lot going on, huh? Yeah. Like, Interesting. it's a different market. People, oh, yeah. Absolutely. People always talk about this bubble. There's but no it's bubble. It's a different market. There's like, no bubble. In, in a matter of. <laughs> so if you guys have been watching, and if you haven't been watching, you're pretty much in a cave. Uh, the market has definitely changed. I think we've hit our peak. Does it mean it's a seller's market or a buyer's market? What do you guys think? I don't Still think it's sellers. Right I don't now. think it's yeah, balanced sure. yet. Yeah. 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 So yeah. definitely the biggest questions we have right now are, uh, are we in a bubble? Is the market going to crash? No, Should no. I wait? Should I wait? Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. We are getting on the seller yeah. side. We have people asking, should I wait on the buyer side? We have people asking, should I wait? And the answer for both of those is no, no. no. <laughs> honestly. So let's check out the data, but for sure, absolutely. There's lots of reasons why both on the buy side and the sell, sell side now can definitely be a good time. Uh, let's check out some data. So this is actually our most recent market update, which we got this morning. Literally, mm -hmm. we uh, we contacted Teresa right here and said, can you please send this uh, to us as early as possible today? And we got it. So a couple of the things we've noticed is this has pretty much been staying the same. 101% of list price has been received nearly every week for like months. Two yep. years. Um, on average. Yeah. 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 Right. Well, we were at 102, we yeah. were at 100, but mm -hmm. pretty much 101 yeah. for at least uh, the past couple weeks if not months average days on market weeks of supply all these things have been a big part of what the change is so days on market pretty much the same right yeah, yeah. yeah. what's pretty one much. thing we've definitely the seen supply. massive weeks change of supply. Yeah. and i say massive in a case of like well, it's been massive over but it's last double. yeah mm -hmm. massive in a in a in a couple week change yeah. this is like For a 50 sure. percent change yeah. Yeah. so yeah. and that yeah. one number we need to focus on big time listings. is right here active listing so active listings one year ago were at 2400 what's 50 percent of 2400 1200 1, what are we at? 3525. Yeah. We're at yeah. a 50% increase in great. inventory, which yeah. is, which is, I like what you said. It's nice. great. It's great. Um, so definitely, uh, one of the things that is very, very, very obvious about change is active listings. And what's the one thing that we've had on the buyer side that's been a problem? Not listings. enough listings. Yeah. 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 So already i know you had caroline had a had somebody recently right that was having problems with going with getting offers accepted yeah I, you know it's been really difficult to get any offer accepted in the last year or two uh, and in the last couple of weeks it's it's just oh there's only one or two offers yeah and this yeah. is great okay we don't have to offer a unicorn to get our offer accepted <laughs> yeah, you exactly. know? Like, i literally yeah, I, I had a client i had a client who had their rent increased from two thousand dollars a month to thirty six hundred dollars a month and they quickly went from a renter to a buyer because yeah. of the fact yeah. that they were going to pay thirty six hundred dollars a month yeah. so all the savings that they were saving every single month were about to be given Eaten to up. somebody else yeah so we went to a new home builder dr horton express uh, and the, the which express. if you don't know about dr dr horton express <laughs> uh say that six times fast <laughs> um they have homes that they are constantly building so you don't have to wait the eight 10, 12 months that most people More have like to wait. 14, 16. 14 months, 16 months, whatever <laughs> yeah. it is. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so they went in, they put an offer in on a Sunday and found out on Tuesday that yeah. they got it. That and fantastic. my clients turned to me, they're like, this is easy. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> obviously that's not been the case for most buyers for a long time mm -hmm. now, a long, long, long time. But change is definitely on the horizon. For so sure. besides just the most recent stats that we just showed you, um, here's a little spreadsheet that we've been tracking since before COVID, before right? COVID. Did we set yeah. this yeah, before, yeah. before COVID? Yeah. Um, so 
this is the interesting thing, and we'll we'll be fast on this because no one wants to stare at Dadder all day. Dadder, Dadder, Dada, all day. Dada. <laughs> potato, potato, <laughs> potato, potato. Yeah. No, I don't know if I use Dadder. <laughs> but thirty-five twenty-five. This is today. Now We've almost doubled in the last yeah, three months. Let's that. scroll backwards. This is every single week of active listings for, for all year, and then twenty twenty-one. See, we got close to thirty-five hundred back in uh, t halfway through 2021. Mm -hmm. Remember when we had that little pop? Yeah. And yeah. we were like, oh my God, things are changing. And then everybody bought them. Yeah, everybody bought them. It was December, November, December of 2020 was the last time we've seen anything over 3,500. Yeah. Uh, so the funny thing is way back then, supply was at 6.2, days on market was at 32. And remember what we were saying? This is a crazy seller's right. market. <laughs> so now everyone's like, it's calming down, it's going away, oh my God. But what were we saying back then when we were at 4,100? This yeah. is a crazy, crazy seller's seller. market. Yeah. So the thing is, yes, we're not in an insane seller's market, but we're in a still a seller's, still seller's, seller's market. market. Yeah. Um, and that's the big thing that we definitely want to just let people know that yes, things are changing, but on the buy side, you've got a chance right now. You're not up yeah, against do. 18 offers, 19 offers. Better than going against one or two than yeah. 18, 19, 20, 27 yeah. offers. Like, yeah, yeah, on the buy yeah. side, honestly, for us too, it's a little more enjoyable. We get to know our clients, see how many clients I've had the past year where I've had to like then go back and like communicate with them because I didn't even get to know them. Right. I have yeah. I have one client who just so moved quickly. in the other day. They never saw the house. They just moved in on Saturday. They'd never seen the home. I've never met them in person. They just moved in on Saturday after finishing up a job out of state. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've never met them. They just <laughs> did, you, did everything virtual, yeah. never saw the home. Um, and I think that's going to change a little bit. Sure. I think now we'll have a chance to like actually know who the buyer yeah. is get to know the family and get to know the fact that they have options. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, yeah. I think that'll help them really and I learn. Feel like, yeah, for buyers too, it will be, there will be more options in the offer process because there wasn't, there wasn't any, um, you had to really make your offer as clean as possible and offer, I, I was joking about unicorns, but really you had to be so creative and offer 60 day lease back for free and foot massages and like, yeah. you know, and anything just, to be creative. Appraisal. And just so you guys right. know, so <laughs> clean to us, the words clean, I don't mean to jump on oh, you, uh, just so they know what clean means. Like to us, clean, clean, a clean offer is like an offer where literally everything is just Waved. the bare minimum right. yeah. waived contingencies waived no appraisal home, home 20 000 over appraised value right. which yeah. to people in la they're like yeah we've been doing that for 15 years yeah. uh, to us it was new and it never even got as bad as la actually um but uh yeah the the so now giving I feel like there's going to be more options for buyers to be like hey i do want a home warranty hey no i'm not putting twenty thousand above appraisal and you know just a little bit more Calm. Calm, yeah. What do you think will be the first thing that comes back on a contract that we don't have right now? Um, Ooh. Oof. Home warranty. Yeah, home, home warranty. warranty. Yeah, because yeah. we used to ask the sellers yeah. what's to one pay for thing, the home warranty. What's one thing that has been a while? Closing costs. Closing, Even closing costs. costs. <laughs> costs. I Big thought time. about that the other day. Yeah. I was like, do I ask for closing costs? I was costs looking at, right I'm here? showing a property today <laughs> where it says, agent to agent remarks, Buyer uh, or seller to offer closing costs. Ooh. Wow, that See, is, so is like you don't that see is that. That is new. These Crazy. are and these yeah. are good points. Sometimes the price doesn't always mean the end result. We were talking new homes uh, earlier, and uh, let me pull this one up because this was one of Jack's stats too. Um, so this is something regarding uh, new homes. So don't worry about the talking head here. Uh, so housing market <laughs> just slid into a full-blown correction. correction. Jack was sliding me some stats on this. Yes. So tell me a little bit about the new homes. So new homes fell 19% to the lowest since April of 2020. Yeah, and uh, that was something that I think Redfin had mentioned, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, new home sales have fell 19%. So what does that mean if the sales have fallen 19%? What does that mean on the other end? What's going to be what's going to be out there for people to actually purchase is inventory. Inventory. Uh, what we've been hearing from a lot of people is now we may be in a little bit of a situation where new home builders 
Remember this? When I bought my house, I got incentives. Three percent for closing costs. I'm an agent, so I got three percent commission, and I put three and a half percent down. Wow. So I bought my house for like eight hundred dollars. Wow. Uh, like literally eight hundred dollars, and uh, it's tripled in price. But uh, I think it's incentives. Incentives. Will, <laughs> well, here's think about this, and I think this is what this article states, which we don't have to go back to it. But um, I think permits. Once you get your permits to build a new home, you don't stop building. Right. Like so, if you have three thousand permits pulled and approved. Now you have this supply of materials coming. Mm -hmm. You can't stop you building. Have building. Yeah. You have to keep, keep building. You have to keep moving. So a lot of these builders who are moving at the speed of light now will start to have inventory, which means that there may be some opportunities coming up. Right. Again, none of this means a correction. None of it need, means a bubble on that level, which I guess we should chat about. I don't think prices will come down. I think just the insanity will drop off. Insanity yeah. will drop. Yeah, because Which haven't we seen uh, a slight reduction? Nineteen percent of but homeless yeah, cut is, their price in the last month. Right. Yeah. So we've seen it. Right. I pulled. I pulled up listings where it's dropped five thousand, ten thousand. Now, that's in the mid level. That's four to six. Right. right. So we've seen it drop because there's not. 15 buyers there's not 15 offers there's mm -hmm. two there's not as much activity which is good for buyers it's not yeah. insane yeah no and definitely this is the case shiller index which shows the national home price index uh this is home prices i was looking at this before look at this trough of up in the 90s to like 2006 and then you have the crash quote unquote uh, the Great Recession, where things dropped about 20%. Then you have this insanity of what we have now. Right. Look but at if you notice, angle. if I were to go back even before the 80s, you'll see the same wave of up and then mm -hmm. down and then up and then down. So let's say, let's say, let's say, God forbid, uh, home prices here went down 10%, um, and we went up what 26 percent year over year right now from year last year, year. Yep. right i think 20 something percent the, the year, year before, before. so mm -hmm. we're up 50 percent mm -hmm. in two years god forbid let's say prices drop 10 percent we're still up 40 percent yes exactly <laughs> we're still yeah, up exactly. we're still up 20 percent a year this yeah. is what people don't realize so it's yeah. not a bubble and the and bubble's the not run, bursting if you don't look next year next like in the long run you know yeah, and, and in the long run, it's still crazy. It's still it's a so crazy, crazy increase. And and our biggest problem is this, uh, is the supply. So this is uh, months of supply of new houses, um, kind of going back to what uh, Jack was saying on new homes specifically. Um, new houses sold, uh, this is the supply. And see how right here in 2020, wow. way right. down, Lockdown. Mm -hmm. new homes. Yep. Uh, and then you have up and then you have a little dip right now uh, as interest rates went up. Mm -hmm. But do you see this blue line right mm -hmm. Going back here? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is a massive jump. And this is kind of what uh, definitely what Jack was talking about. And if you don't know what Case Shiller is, Case Shiller, Case Shiller price if index. you look up Case Shiller for anything real estate related, they have a monthly report always on housing supply, mm -hmm. construction, all of that. But look at this massive jump in new home uh, inventory right here, uh, out of nowhere, similar to down in uh, September, December of uh, September of 2020. But what happened was when that happened, then they added supply, so then the inventory went down, and then now that's why they think there's going to be an onslaught of inventory because they tried to meet the demand of when it was low right here. And then it went the other direction. Right. So naturally, we're going to have to now get rid of this inventory. So, hey, who knows? Who knows? None of us. None of us have the crystal ball. Nobody. And let's talk when it mean when I mean nobody. We have 32 economists in the Business Insider uh, website that all discuss what their thoughts were on whether or not we'd have a housing bubble. Mm, let's 32. See. Let's see what they yeah, say. Let's take a look. 32. So let's check this out. So on the on the insider, are we in a housing bubble? 32 experts. And when we say experts, these are these are all the top in real estate. Like economics, real estate, anything numbers related, these people would bore you at dinner, but would right. would absolutely <laughs> give you the details that would uh 
would tell you what's going on. So we go right here to this part of the article where it states out of 32, six say that they think it's a bubble. 22 say no, and 44 say maybe. Four, just four. Uh, four. Sorry, four. Oh, my God. <laughs> 44 plus 22 plus six yeah, yeah. is yeah. not equal 32. 32. It's more than 32. Uh, so six say yes, 22 say no, and four say maybe. Uh, I, I'm not going to... Suppose the difference on that four, you got two to, two to yeah, get. Yeah. yeah, six and then 24. Yeah, so the big thing is we still have to listen to that those six because there always sure. is the oracle who in... A year or two says I'm brilliant I and predicted I, it. I predicted it but the big thing in the and end is, is we don't know <laughs> right. but what we do need to do is is listen to these uh, experts and listen to their information because when all of it aligns and they all say yes then at least we know it ahead of time uh, but when I went through this article, um, what I noticed is like Ivy Zellman, who in my opinion is the smartest woman on the planet when it comes to anything like this as far as real estate especially. Uh, I actually saw her speak in person and uh, she knows such specific data and interesting stats that like the whole room just went silent because she lost everybody. Uh, but she knows her stuff. In her opinion, she feels like no, we're not in a bubble, but yes, there's going to be some corrections. Like Boise, Idaho has gone up 73%. 70, oh yeah, my God. 73% in Boise, Idaho. And Boise, Idaho is a beautiful place. It's beautiful. That's where San Francisco went when COVID happened. Mm -hmm. Half of San Francisco, right. I had a couple clients here move to Boise, believe it or not. Um, and definitely, uh, I think there could be something on the horizon there. But then... You have another economist which um, states the complete opposite, David Rosenberg. Hello, David. Hello, David. Um, Hi, David. There he is. Uh, David Rosenberg thinks the entire world is going to end. And uh, I, this is the part of his quote that I really enjoy is, the leverage is less acute, but the price action is equally parabolic and out of sync with underlying fundamentals that typically drive real estate valuations. So in his opinion, he thinks we'll have a bubble worse than the last one as far as home prices are concerned, um, which is really interesting because I don't see anybody else saying it to this extreme. No. And uh, especially if we look at um, Keeping Current Matters, uh, this is one of our favorite uh, mm -hmm. go-tos for yeah. information. Um, they've got a whole thing about the recession um, that I definitely want to pull up here uh, that has um, a breakdown of what the last six recessions uh, actually had as far as uh, effect, price yeah, increase or in decrease. Yeah. You saw this, right? Yeah. I, I just yeah. posted it on my story today. Yeah. yeah. What, now, what do, what do they say about the history of a recession in a housing market? Oh, let me pull it up and show you. So what, what they say out of the last six is, um, so out of the last six, 1980, Maybe? it went up 6.1%. 6 6.1, .1. oh, there it is, okay. 1981, 3.5. It was weird that we had two recessions back to back. Uh, 1991, negative 1.9%. 1 this is housing uh, prices. 2001, it went up 6.6% 6 .6 because it was an internet bubble, not right. related to housing. Yeah. Yep. Um, 2008, housing related crisis, negative 19.7%. Yep. Uh, 2020? Up six. Up six percent. Um, in this case, with inventory being as low as it is, what I found in that article with all the economists was that majority felt inventory is going to be the problem. Yeah. Um, obviously, new houses coming on in mm -hmm. a big, huge amount that could be help for the inventory. Mm -hmm. But like we were talking, what's wrong with the neutral market? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Like if we're at 9,000 homes, that's beautiful. Like. Right. Sellers are happy, prices are going up, uh, and buyers are happy because they have choices and they yeah. have time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the big thing for me. Everyone, sellers are like freaking out. Nah, I'm not gonna sell now. It's like, well, when are you gonna sell? Right. Like, do yeah. you sell after it comes down a little or do you sell later when it's more? The nice thing is a seller may actually have a house to buy now. Yeah, yeah. That that's what I was gonna say. Good, sellers have now thing. options because in the last year, a lot of people were like, I want to sell, but where am I going to go? Like, right. where yeah. am I going to buy? And there was no options. So right. Now, exactly. actually, sellers can sell and find a house. In and like a maybe they manner can and get 
and take advantage of those new home builders. Yeah, and right? I think, I think what could happen to you, uh, that's a good point, is I think now that could be a little boost in inventory as well, is sellers who are sitting on the sideline because they yeah. couldn't buy anything, they'll add too. So you'll have yeah. continued listings from people now that are gonna actually buy mm -hmm. something because yeah. they can. Mm -hmm. We'll have people who continue to move here. Uh, we were looking at some numbers before that were really, really interesting. Let me see if I can pull these up. Um, regarding our state compared yeah, to other states. That's really yeah, interesting. This, yeah. this was definitely interesting because what it did mention um, is migration spots and where people are coming and going. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one of these articles were the top eight migration spots in the country. 32% um, of home buyers are looking to relocate still. So look, Q1 of 22, 32.3%. Right. Q4 of 21, 31%. We're actually higher now than we were uh, just a few quarters ago, where you feel like, oh, would it, was this gonna slow down with people moving? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. For Vegas? No, Vegas What's is the next cheapest been... spot in all of the West Coast besides Las Vegas? Bakersfield, Can I answer? Oh. California. Bakersfield, California, <laughs> exactly. Yes, so I look, my popular so migration <laughs> points. Uh, Virginia Beach, San Antonio, Houston, Texas, Jacksonville, Bakersfield, California. No offense, Bakersfield, but I do think <laughs> Vegas has a lot more to offer. Uh, sure. I heard but, they just put in a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Searchlight. <laughs> so here's the deal, though. 365, you know what? They've got a speed on that. You know what? Vegas uh, is definitely a haven for a lot of people in California. Um, but you know there may be some parts of the country that 365 is an appealing price point with nice weather because yeah. it is california yeah. um, but the other part of this article i saw that was really interesting is this is um portion of searches from users outside of the metro um, for each area net inflow and net inflow for last year and this year las vegas um, we have slowed down a little bit for people coming from out of state However, uh, 5,000 people is still a, a huge amount. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look, where are they coming from? LA. LA. So our average price point is 445. Look at every other city on the West Coast. Sacramento, California, 604. Um, there, look, I turned my sound off there, everybody. Sorry about that. Uh, Sacramento, California, 604. San Diego, California, oh, wow. 865 average, average. price point. Um, another one we had on here, Spokane, Washington. All right. So there's another option on the West mm -hmm. Coast. They can go to Spokane, it's Washington. There, uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's also the middle of Washington. Yeah, it is. It's not, it's the not coast. Seattle. Right. Uh, and then you have here 695 in Bend, Oregon. That's a beautiful um, place. And they're, they're leaving places like San Francisco, 1.6 oh, million yeah. average, 900,000 average in LA. Seattle, Washington, there it is, 850. Uh, Denver, Colorado, 615. Portland, Oregon, 556. Pick another city on the West Coast that's cheaper than us besides Bakersfield, California, with high population. I don't think yeah. you're gonna find it. High no. population and great things to do. Yeah, Phoenix, also higher than Phoenix, us. Higher yep. Than us. Boise, Idaho, way higher. higher than us. Salt Lake City, higher. higher. Mm -hmm. um, so where I think for Vegas that people don't realize is this, this is gonna continue to be a case where people leave other areas because we're just cheaper. Uh, yeah. And we've and got so much to offer. And we that keeps our demand really high. Yeah. So speak back to the market, like offer demand. Like we have so much demand. Like people think, oh, prices are gonna go, but we j we have so much people moving here, and there's just so much demand. Yeah. So. Oh, for sure. That and that's definitely something that uh, I think will keep up. Um, I definitely think the demand will continue. And uh, one of the things that uh, I also noticed was, um, so this was one uh, about share of homes for sale with a price drop. So price drops have increased, mm -hmm. but the big thing people don't realize is in order for a market to neutralize, prices have to stop being listed mm -hmm. five, 10% above, above the last yeah. comp. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think comps now will start to be equal to the last sale, not 5% yeah. above the sure. last sale, which means things are calming down for that reason. Because look here, you see Boise, Idaho, share of homes with a price drop in April of 2022, 40.8%. Wow. Share of homes for sale with a price drop in 2021, 
10 percent huh. their change has been 61.6 um, so this is something that definitely I think we need to pay attention to. And if you come down to Vegas, Vegas is right here. We're only at 18.7% compared to 11 though. Mm -hmm. But that also is going to help chill out the market a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So these aren't necessarily bad things. I think on a seller's side, if you're waiting for the top, I think the top has come. Uh, and you may be on the downside. But not uh, too far down. But I think on the downside, meaning your your top is gone uh like some people are still waiting they're like i'm right. gonna wait for the yeah. top i think the top, the top is gone, is gone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah i think the yeah. top is gone does it mean you're gonna lose value no i think you could probably sell for the same today in three months from now yeah uh but you're not gonna get eight offers push right. the price up thirty thousand dollars i've got one under contract right now that if it fell out i would probably have to go a little lower just because we pushed it like crazy yeah. uh on uh a street that I won't name, uh, name it. it's under contract but if I had to go back on that was a push price that was a, I'm gonna get lots of offers price not a situation where uh, where we had to list at the last comp right. um, so another one that uh, that I have to find an article on was uh, comparing us um, across the board to other uh, overvalued markets um, so I know we were chatting about this before, mm -hmm. um, Jack and I were, especially because we brought this up. So this is an article that is in Fortune magazine um, that actually is regarding uh, overvalued housing markets. So everyone keeps saying overvalued, overvalued. So I saw this article. I got nervous for a second. It mentions, you know what that's called? That's called a clickbait headline. It's, it's total, total, total clickbait. 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 So keep an eye on these overvalued housing markets as the housing boom implodes. And then you come down here and mm -hmm. nearly every metro is red. Uh, and what they're saying is overvalued as far as if things were to continue the way they are. So I continued reading. And I got down to this next section. This one's a good one. This one's good. Very high, over 70% chance of a price dip. All the way down to very low, which is zero to 20. So very low is this dark blue. Very high is this red. Look at Las Vegas. We're not Now red. look at this. This <laughs> changes, this changes yeah. the article a bit because when you look at that first graph, you're like, oh my God, we're all, the whole world's gonna implode. So then you look at this, very low. What's this little sliver right here? Mm. Las Vegas, Henderson, Paradise. Mm -hmm. So in Vegas, we have a zero to 20 chance that we're overvalued. Um, I kind of agree with that. Yeah. And I think the thing supporting that for us is that situation with us being surrounded by metros with way, 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 way higher prices. Mm -hmm. yep. And what kind of construction are we seeing here? like uh uncommons amazing mm -hmm. stuff on yeah. the strip there's some cool things coming yeah, yeah. I, out, out in henderson with the new henderson yeah. high-end luxury yeah. High -end. like yeah. i think our time has has arrived on that market um and then just overall we have so much to offer uh but this i saw this and i was like eh, okay yeah. compared to phoenix mesa you've got a whole uh, red section here here's boise over here um, Boise, Idaho, uh, high chance, Bend, Oregon, beautiful area, very high chance because of people pulling out of Seattle. And then uh, Sacramento, you have a medium chance, um, mostly because I think these, this is a mature city. Believe it or not, the only other reds are over here in uh, like Bridgeport, Stamford, Nor Norwalk. That's people leaving New York City. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of those people, if, you're, if you work in New York, that commute, if you're back in the office, I think suddenly you get on the train to your hour and a half commute. Believe me, I've done it. Done it yeah. uh, I think a lot of these people may turn around and be like, I'm going back to the city. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, I don't know. New York's pretty fun. Um, I couldn't go back now, but I, I love to go back for five days and then get the heck nice out. Place to visit. <laughs> nice place to visit. Um, but definitely, uh, as far as that's concerned, nice to see that economists agree that we're not overvalued. Um, so I think in the end, what what's your opinion, Jack? I'm gonna give, we're each gonna do a prediction. Okay. And we're gonna go back to this, and All then right. we're gonna see who was right. Or who cares, actually, in the end. <laughs> My favorite word, yeah. stabilization. All right, all right. 
That is what is going to so happen. So we'll call this, because they like to put great on everything. It's always the great depression. The, the great, great stabilization. The great <laughs> stabilization, as, like as Jack has coined. Yes. Uh, what do you think, Denise? Um, I'm going to go along with those same lines, but I'm going to use food. It's not a cappuccino anymore. It's a latte. Still the same thing, less froth. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Still All right. tasty. I like it. I like it. I like That's it. a good one, yeah. too. What about you? The same thing. I along the same lines you guys i think yep. we're going to stabilize and um just be in a normal market happy market for yeah. everyone yeah. yeah i i agree uh, i like i think i'm going to run with uh with jacks uh we'll we'll say uh Let's all cheers to a latte for the great stagflation. <laughs> the stabilization. <laughs> the stabilization. I mean, stagflation. No, I said stagflation. Yeah. No, stabilization. Oh, no. Yeah. Maybe that could happen too. But, but it goes to show you that we all look at the data, we all look at the stats, and we all come to the same conclusion. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, that, I mean, that's. But, that's I mean, for two years, I've heard, oh, it's going to crash. And people two years ago were like, I'm going to wait because it's going to crash. It's going to crash. But, like, if you look at the data, it's not. It's not. And, yeah. And, and then they, they, were, they were like, oh, I should have bought two years ago. You, yes, yeah, yeah. you should have, have when I told you. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, too. Like, that's a good point. Like, I know you mentioned something about inflation and if yep. you buy and if you don't buy. Uh, but either way, if you're not in, it's still going to be higher. I think is what it's going to be. Let's say we go back to normal, 3%, then you're still negative 5%, but you're still better off than if you didn't buy. Right. If you yeah. don't buy, Absolutely. you have no control. Yeah. Right? So back to your renters that became buyers. You have no control. Yeah, $3,600 a month. No control. I think yeah. rent's going to continue to go up. Absolutely. Because there's think, no inventory. Demand. Yeah, there's demand. no inventory. Demand, demand yeah. is still there. Yeah. Vegas is still cool. Still Construction's cool. still going. Yeah. Awesome. And I think the the biggest thing is prices are still even. It, here's the thing none of us know. Tomorrow yeah. they could go to 10% with interest rates and, and make us all wrong. Uh, <laughs> and, I, and that's the thing. We have to be okay with that because that's just the way it works. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. only way to know you're in a recession is to be in one. The only way to know a market's going to crash is to see it crash. So in the end, I think what happens will happen. But based on data, which we'll live with right now, I think we're in, a, we're in good shape. We're in good shape. Yeah. But if you look at, like, back to my point earlier, the long run, like historically, real estate, like even if it did pull back a little bit, it does appreciate in the long run yeah. always and but um, we, and if I it pulls a, back yeah. that's good yeah. yeah and i had a seller that she bought just at the top of the crash in 2006 or 7 and she held on to it and finally the market went back up there you go if it crashes it goes back up it's like the this is how the market works so you have to look at the big picture unless you're a flipper it doesn't matter yeah. it's going to appreciate there you so. go yeah. if you're and a flipper, thing, if, you're a flipper the <laughs> if you're a flipper there's still opportunity out yeah, there absolutely, like, absolutely yeah. if yeah. you're an investor i'm about to send a message mm -hmm. to all my investors because i think now we can negotiate a bit absolutely. more well now yep. it's starting yep. to make sense yes. the rent to mortgage value i have a few investors that because people were putting you know 50 above you know, my guy was value, getting frustrated. it didn't make sense yeah, i would send them the numbers yeah. i'd run it in our report yeah and i'd run it in our report i'd send it to him he goes two percent <laughs> cash on cash return yeah i'd be like yeah like it looks good but it's not as good as it looks yeah now i think we'll have the opportunity to look at yeah. numbers and send our offers based on real numbers not Absolutely. based on hype right. and how long can we sustain 26 percent? let's be honest yeah. you can't sustain 26 percent. so it, it, any any kind of adjustment is warm a warm welcome from us because I think it only eventually uh, will make things uh, even out and stable. Stable. And have our buyers be happy and our sellers be happy. So uh, from the BKG, we welcome the great <laughs> stabilization. stabilization. I can't even <laughs> say definitely, that But uh, definitely, I think, I think uh, if you guys ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to any of us. We'll keep talking data. We'll keep telling you the real deal of what's going on because that's the only way you can make decisions is based on that, not based on hyped news articles. Yes. Because the funny thing is every single article we just pulled up, if you were to look at the headline, Clickbait. you'd think the world yeah. was ending, even yeah. though if you read the article, it says otherwise. So read so to the bottom. Read to the bottom. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to read it, just call us or text us <laughs> we'll and, we'll, and we'll tell we'll you the real the deal. <laughs> but either way, hey guys, this has been interesting. It's been fun. I think it will only get more interesting. Uh, no one's going to win this because we all said the same thing. I know. <laughs> so when we go Copy back, <laughs> when we go back, we could take ourselves to dinner. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
because either way, uh, I think I think we'll uh, we're gonna see some good change mm-hmm. for sure. So hey, the change is good. Change is good, and the market is is gonna be happy for both buyers and sellers, and we're happy to see it. Any questions? Feel feel free to reach out. But we'll see you guys another time. Have a good one. Yeah. Bye.